The original Dune has been around for a bloody long time, and since the original 1965 book, it's featured renditions in basically every form of alternative media, whether it's board games, video games, or some random niche movie, I don't know what that is. The video game camp is what I'm interested in though, as there have been quite a few cancelled projects over the years, some actual releases, and within those, a few games that were actually even good. And in a stroke of luck for me, basically all of them were real-time strategy games, with most being created by none other than Westwood Studios, developers of a little series that some of you might have heard of. The first Dune game was simply titled Dune, released in 1992 by French developer Cryo Entertainment. Dune is a hybrid game that's as much of an adventure game as it is a strategy one. You play as Paul Atreides and you'll do all of your interacting and travelling from a first person perspective. All of the expected characters are there, and honestly the art and animations just on the front of it are pretty great, especially for something that's well over 30 years old. Like look at this shot of Paul dying in the desert if you fly too close to the Harkonnens, this is pretty gnarly. In the strategy portion you're essentially managing your efforts on Arrakis in a top down view that's more 4x than RTS, but those terms didn't really exist in 1992 so we'll just keep referring to it simply as strategy. Something that's not apparent when playing though is that the fact that this game exists at all is kind of a miracle. During Dune's development, Cryo, the developer, were having financial troubles, and Virgin Interactive, the game's publisher, were on the verge of cancelling the project altogether. Virgin, after literally criticising the game for being too French, actually decided to approach an American studio to do something with the license instead, and leave Cryo's game behind. And that's where many of the higher ups in America thought they'd left it, until later in 1991, when an audit discovered that the French Dune game was still being funded without anyone really knowing. After this, the developers managed to convince the superiors to not cancel the game and keep it going by impressing some key people with their work. And so Dune was released, and it even ended up doing pretty well. Ah oh well, all's well that ends well. Except there was one small problem. Westwood was still making their game in America, well, um, oops, what do we do? I guess we call it June 2. It was certainly a bizarre situation. These two games were released months apart, were from different developers, and have basically nothing to do with each other, yet are apparently in the same series. Must have been confusing being a June fan at your local games retailer in 1992. The two games initially released on DOS, and they were both well received commercially and critically. However, Dune 2 was something entirely special. Westwood had, unknowingly at the time, laid the groundwork for the entire real-time strategy genre, a genre that could hardly even be defined before this had come out. Dune 2 introduced things like fog of war, in-depth mouse control, a build tree, and a revolutionary user interface, all of which I don't think had been seen in any game before this, laying the foundations for all RTS games going forward. Though it lacked features you'd take for granted just a few years later, like a multiple unit control, rally points, a build queue, and mouse dragging, Dune 2 is surprisingly playable today. The through line from this to Command & Conquer to future Westwood games is blindingly obvious, and it's humbling to think that we wouldn't have any of these classics without the work done on this little Dune strategy game. It features three factions, the houses of Atreides, Harkonnen, and Ordos, and they're about as half as asymmetrical as Nod and GDI were from the original Command & Conquer. Which is to say not a whole lot, but hey, it's 1992, and they're making the first proper RTS game, so I think we can give them a pass. The development team for Dune 2 featured a ton of OGs that would go on to define real-time strategy. There was Joe Bostic, lead programmer for CNC up until Red Alert 2, and founder of Petroglyph Games. Brett Sperry, the founder of Westwood, who piloted the company into greatness throughout the 90s. And of course, Frank Lepacki, creator of countless iconic tracks throughout the history of both Westwood Studios and Petroglyph Games. With the experience of the team and the success they'd found throughout the 80s and into the early 90s with Dune 2, it's not hard to see how they absolutely exploded in the late 90s and established themselves 
as one of the premier developers of their time. Westwood clearly capitalised on their success and knowledge gained from Dune 2 with Command and Conquer over the next wee while, but they wouldn't return to Arrakis until 1998, with the release of Dune 2000. With it, Westwood took the chance to lay some more groundwork. The remaster. Eh, that's not entirely fair, Dune 2000 was only sort of a remake of Dune 2, and there were some significant differences. Also, just note here that the footage you're seeing is from the community open RA version of this game, not the original. I just really struggled to get the capture working. This is what the original looks like for reference, it's not too dissimilar apart from the resolution. Anyway, the main difference with Dune 2000 versus the original is that the Westwood didn't actually make it, it was only published by them. Instead, it was developed by Intelligent Games of the UK, who had worked with Westwood earlier creating the expansions to Red Alert, Counter-Strike, and Aftermath. Dune 2000 developed on what Westwood had done with Command and & Conquer, and as such gameplay was a vast improvement of what was available with Dune 2. However, many at the time didn't consider it enough of an upgrade over the original, as it was intended as a remake rather than a proper sequel, which I think is what some people were hoping for. Damn. Some things never do change, do they? Still, looking back now, Dune 2000 is a lot better to play than the original, and the FMV cutscenes of Command & Conquer fame are as endearing as ever. It's just a shame that playing it is such a pain in the ass. While the open RA version is good, sometimes it's nice to play the thing as it was created. Especially if it's your first time, as it was for me for this video. Westwood's final Dune game was in fact the last Dune title to be released until 2022 with Dune Spice Wars. Okay, there was actually one other, but it was the same year as Westwood's game and it was really bad and stinky, so let's just forget about it and move on. Emperor Battle for Dune was Westwood's last ever RTS game, as it was released just a year and a half before their closure and merger with EA Pacific. Westwood's last couple of games may not have performed overly well, but Emperor did quite well for itself. It reviewed well too, though not quite as well as its predecessors. But if you can get it running, it's certainly the best playing of those original games today, besides maybe from the open RA version of Dune 2000. As a direct sequel to Dune 2000, Emperor evolved on the game in quite a few ways, though none were more obvious than the switch to 3D. Well, maybe the production value upgrades on the FMV cutscenes. Alongside Dune 2000, Emperor is the most Command & Conquer-y feeling Dune game out there. There are the building animations, the UI, the unit types, the power system, it's all there. It plays pretty well no matter what faction you choose, and they're more asymmetrical too, leading to more variety than earlier games. The visuals are kind of in a weird spot, this was created before the W3D engine was fully in use, so whether this is running on an early version of that or something, maybe something entirely different, I'm not sure. Even for the time, the graphics are not great. They've certainly aged worse than their 2D counterparts of the era. Regardless, it's still very playable and it feels familiar to dive in. The only issue is that thanks to the software package it used, it will literally not run at all on later versions of Windows. But thankfully that can be fixed with some community patches. Our final game takes us into the modern era, Dune Spice Wars, was released in 2022 as a 4x RTS hybrid game that, despite being based primarily on the books rather than the movies, absolutely benefited from the latter's blockbuster success. This is the only one I haven't played myself, as, well, I didn't want to drop 50 bucks for a two minute segment at the end of this video, especially because Spice Wars isn't exactly an RTS, with its lean into 4x gameplay. That's about as much as I have to say on it, like I said, I haven't played it myself, however, if reviews are anything to go by, then it's a pretty decent game, and if it interests you, then you should go check it out. Thanks so much for watching, you can expect more in-depth videos on some of these games soon. Let me know what ones you'd like to see most in the comments. Big ups to my patrons and YouTube members who keep the lights on here. You can join for as little as $1 a month, next to legends like Takayo, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Gracebert4, George, Nedders, John Kaiser, King Thickums, Parful Bram, Christian, Dan, Bishop's Arch, Orion, Dasrufkin, and Cameron, Emma Paladins, Johnny, Merica, Age of Cause, Joe, Tank, and Imperian, Absolute Legends. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.